Well, thank you very much. Um, cool. Uh, so yes, master your storytelling. We're going to talk. We're going to get to chart types, <clears throat> and we're going to. Uh, I think a lot of people that do any sort of visual best practice, deep thoughts. There's a particular chart that says if you're trying to do this, use these charts. We're going to show that. I promise we'll get there, but we're going to work our way to that. Um, I am going to introduce myself a little bit, uh, but primarily on this slide, I am going to put a caveat in here. These are all things that are true about me. What's not on here is that I have five little boys, most of whom are home from school already, and they're playing Minecraft in another room. This should mean they're occupied for hours, but just in case there's noise, I'm not being burglarized. I'm being terrorized by my children. So that might happen, just so you know. All right, so let's talk about chart types. Um, whenever I design, particularly when I was first starting out, uh, I had a very particular um, design process. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a second. Um, but I think a lot of people sort of, they get creative with chart types. And you will see a lot of your Tableau public or, or screenshots. Of, this is my... Uh, radial bar chart, or this is my vector, or, or you know, all these crazy things. And it's like, does this actually tell the story? And I think a lot of that need or um, desire to explore very unconventional chart types is a dissatisfaction for the rank and file dashboards that we as a community are producing, which comes back to chart types. Don't like what I've got. The answer must be more innovative types of charts. Plus, I can show off how awesome I am at building Tableau stuff. So let's put a pin in that and come back to that. And let's go back to, uh, let's deconstruct in a way what is actually the objective here. Um, oops, I need to use my mouse the right way. Let's use my, there we go. Uh, and that is that the very, the only thing that really matters is the insight that we are trying to drive. And I, I love this particular little diagram here. I got it from Forbes. And if you take broadly the three components here, the data, which has to have interesting stuff in it, the visuals, how we are then bringing that together, codifying, aggregating it, and then what we are actually trying to show, you can see how those all intersect to take our user, to take the report consumer a little bit further. And only when they all intersect do we drive insight or action or behaviors that are going to benefit the organization. And so you need all of those. Most of the time, narrative is what gets sacrificed first. We're going to talk about that. Um, so when we're talking about the process here, uh, in terms of how you can best predict a pathway to get to your change, it is, in my opinion, I'm trying to do this the best way, the art of the story, which is you start by exploring your data. And Tableau is amazing for this. This is one of the key differentiators between Tableau and other analytics tools in my view, how quickly and easily you can click and drag and start playing and exploring. You will immediately start to see patterns that you would not have otherwise found if you were just writing SQL. In the exploration, as well as the conversations you're having with your users, you will find the questions that are there to be answered. You will find the insights. Wireframing, we're going to talk a lot about that in this particular presentation because this is a heavy influencer on how we choose our chart types is, is the third one. You then focus the design so that the visual elements help tell the story. And as everybody that's ever built a dashboard knows, it's never actually done. We just keep iterating, making it better for the next series of questions or the next audiences or the next awesome features that happen to come out of the newest releases. So this is the predictable pathway. Now we're going to spend a lot of time uh, in my 20 minutes or so um, really on sort of say three and four. Uh, and I have a quote. Um, it's perhaps not as funny as uh, I would like to say that the previous speaker, Christopher, is my cousin, my brother, my dad. We only share the last name. I don't believe we have a blood. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. But my quote is from Abraham Lincoln, and um, it's really about the value of preparation. So he said, give me six hours to top down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. 
This is never more true than when you are dashboarding. The more time you can think, prepare, plan before you actually start clicking and building in Tableau, you are going to end up with a better end product. So let me show you what the typical design workflow is. And this is exactly what I did. Uh, in fact, I have to stop myself because I inevitably get in and start doing this exact thing. And I'm like, I'm smarter than this. Why am I doing that? So you start by playing around and exploring the data. And I find interesting stuff in the data. So then I start building worksheets. This is a cool worksheet. This is a cool worksheet. This is an interesting point in the data. Look at this trend here. Then I have all these disparate individual worksheets without a plan. I chuck them into a dashboard. I think you can probably see a pattern forming. I then go to my users and I say, hey, I found this cool thing. Four of them, in fact. What do you think? And they're like, ah, uh, sort of. And then I take a look at the final dashboard. I'm like, oh, no, I've ended up with four bar charts. I'm going to arbitrarily change those so that they don't look like four bar charts. So I end up with something like this, which isn't really so serving the story as much as it me aesthetically saying, I've got four bar charts. I can't have that. I'll turn one this way. I'll make one into a line graph and a pie chart. Again, the design came last. The users came near the end. It was really me playing around and getting kind of caught up with actually building worksheets and being technical versus actually thinking about the story. The story actually came last in this workflow. So if we undo this and start again, let's change the order. We're going to start with the data, exploring it, making sure the data is what we need. Because if it's not, if it's not the right aggregation, if it's incomplete, if it's inaccurate, we got to go back upstream, exactly like Christopher said. We then go to our users first. What are you trying to look at? What are you currently using? How could it be better? Is it a frequency? Is it level of detail? Is it being able to explore and drill down? What are the other questions that you're not getting answered right now? I then wireframe. And the wireframe, for anyone that doesn't do it, is a black and white skeletal representation. It's your blueprint. Uh, I personally, um, I, I like to craft my final version of a wireframe in PowerPoint. You can, you can do them quite quickly. You could use Visio or Figma or whatever. Um, and then once you get the wireframe, and again, each of these is going to be iterative. So I'll go back to my users. And when they want to change any part or all of the wireframe, it's a little easy, basically a drawing or construction of a drawing. I can move, move things around and change it quite easily. It's not like I'm having to rebuild it in Tableau. So once I get them comfortable with what they're seeing and, and they don't, they're not looking at a white page, I mean, for non-technical users, you'll never get past a white page if that's what you start with. I can then start building specific charts. By the way, BAN is big ass numbers. That's an acronym. I can start building specific charts to tell the story that my users have told me is the most beneficial version of it. And then I can combine that into a sleek, efficient, highly effective, beautiful dashboard versus back here where I was like, I'm trying to artificially make it look different so that it's not so bland and it's not just one of many dashboards. Um, in preparation for this, I went and Googled uh, Tableau dashboard uh, on the image search. And I would say somewhere on 80% of all of the chart types, whether they were inside of individual dashboard images or just entire images themselves were, were bar charts. Yes, they are effective. But again, what, what story are we trying to tell? So then we get to, um, oh, I guess there's an intermediate step in here that you could do depending on how beautiful or high, how visible this dashboard is going to be. And so sometimes I will mock up the wireframe in whatever wireframing tool I'm using so that I can actually see color and design elements before I go build. Um, we did a, uh, a uh, research grant from Deakin University was able to start uh, doing data with uh, acts of violence in Afghanistan and Iraq during the conflicts there. And we had a ton of data and they wanted to make it public. So we made it into a long form dashboard and we spent a lot of time and energy 
building in design elements to really make it a compelling almost infographic. And so we we, we mocked it up before we built it because otherwise it would have taken us 10 times as long to do it. So in those types of situations, that mock-up is really valuable because it gives your client, your users, even if you yourself are your user, uh, the ability to see it that much closer to the end state. Okay, so in terms of wireframing, let's go a little bit deeper into there. Uh, I will start here. I will I will draw on a piece of paper. There was um, a gentleman named Robert, and his name is escaping me. He was an American that was over here. He spoke at several of these in his presentation, I think in like 2018, was The Art of Doodling. Um, I'm sorry, Robert, I don't remember your last name. I can see his face perfectly. But he did an entire presentation uh, for the Tableau French Festival several years ago about the art of doodling and the powerful aspect of it. Because when we're building, we're using a different part of our brain than when we're doodling. And you can actually draw out far more creativity by having a piece of paper and a pen versus trying to build this guy over here. So start with doodling. And then once you start to get a frame for what you're trying to do, then you can convert it to this guy. And I think this is, if you've got stakeholders, this is what you show them right here. You start over here and get your ideas down. And it gives you ability to work creatively, smoothly, and scrap, try new things, scrap, try new things. You then get to this version of it when you're trying to actually show somebody and get them on board. And then if you need to, then you can do the mock-up. So what's the value of a wireframe? Well, I think it's pretty evident when you start to think of it as building a blueprint for a house. But when we start to marry it back to chart types, it avoids that problem of individually these worksheets all work. Every one of these is a bar chart and they all tell a great story. But when I pull them together, are each of these worksheets supporting the greater story? The wireframe is the best way to conceptualize that in a single place. Now. I promised I would show you the huge board of all chart types and what you were trying to do, which is this. So for those people that haven't seen this, and there's a lot of different ways that this is displayed, um, Andy Kriebel actually has an interactive dashboard that allows you to choose these things, and he kind of takes you through a kind of tour of the different ways you can do this. But I think this is as effective as anything because it kind of gets you everything you need in one spot. If you are trying to show a relationship, for instance, you might come over here and consider, well, if I'm trying to show a relationship between two variables, well, then that's the axes and their position on them. If I'm trying to show three variables, well, then the size of them might be the third variable. If I'm trying to compare, well, there is the beautiful bar chart. And you can start to get more exciting stuff. Uh, but this gives you an idea of the why. Why would I use a pie chart? even though they're often maligned? Or why would I use a scatter plot or a bar chart or a histogram or whatever it is? This gives you the reason why in terms of how our brains perceive data and how that chart best supports a fast dissemination of the insight, which is really what we're trying to do. I'm trying to get my user with as little thinking as possible to perceptually understand exactly what I'm trying to convey to them. For anyone that's taken um, some of the advanced Tableau courses, I'm referring to the three types of memory. Um, Long-term memory, like one of the one of my kids' birthdays. Don't ask me. There's five of them. Uh, Short-term memory, which is my ability to process and make decisions. So if I go into a restaurant and I, there's more than five items on the menu, it's going to take me a while to start batching and making decisions because we can only keep about five to seven things in short-term memory. That's like our RAM. And then perceptual memory. This is where chart types really play into a uh, key effect. Perceptual memory is our ability to take sensory information and batch process it. And in that regard, our brains are supercomputers. If you think about everything that you're perceiving right now, the screen, my voice, the feel of your chair, the carpet under your feet, the temperature in the room, all of those things are stimuli. And if we were to put them into a database format, that would be hundreds of billions of ones and zeros to try to convey that information. Our brain, batches it all at once. Chart types are meant to be in that vein. We want to get the meaning across immediately versus having people use that short-term memory to decipher it. We want them to use the short-term memory to make decisions on what they want to do about it or to dig deeper. Just an easy test. 
uh, think about this as human performance if the previous one was tableau performance. If you show somebody a dashboard uh, as a way to sort of test whether or not your dashboard is effective, the chart types you've selected, the layout and everything, if you see them do this, you have put a load on their short-term memory because they're trying to now understand using the short-term memory versus perceptual memory. That's a great indication that you might have overloaded your dashboard. Maybe you've got too much text. Maybe you've got too many marks. Maybe you're trying to do too much. So wireframe leads you to this, and this allows you to choose in your highlight, your showcase spot, the type of chart that is best going to tell that story. So what are the consequences if you don't have good planning? Well, a poor use of space, meaning I have a primary point, for instance, that is the most important part of this dashboard, but I've got four charts of equal size. And maybe they're all dashboards, which doesn't lend to primacy across any one of those charts. It could also mean that there's a lack of unity or focus. Again, what is it that I'm trying to say? Are the other charts equal in value? Should they be their own dashboards? Or are they supporting that narrative? Again, if we've got something complex to say, if we don't plan, it's going to be very difficult for us to say it. Not planning means you're also probably going to realize you've made some mistakes in the way you've laid things out. And if you build it in Tableau as a draft, you're going to have to rebuild it in Tableau as a draft. And as we've seen, Repetitive chart types is a very common effect if you start building from the worksheet up versus starting with the vision, the use case, and then going to the dashboard down. So some basic design goals. Uh, and again, this is wireframing. This is design. This is storytelling. You want your controls to be uh, intuitive. Um, blank space is, is not a, uh, a bad thing. It can actually be quite clarifying. And in some of the dashboards you may have seen on Tableau Public, it can actually be quite elegant and um, uh, austere, austere. I think that's a word. Um, the layout and structure can emphasize the story. So again, if you've got, um, if you think about this in a chart type perspective, if this is a scatter plot with three or four dots on it, and these guys down here are high color charts like maps and area charts, your chart types aren't lending themselves to the story because these high color areas of your dashboard are going to naturally attract the eye versus potentially what is your more important chart, which you've given the right space to, you've given the right real estate to, but the chart types have to be collaborative to that. Um, proper use of containers. So for instance, if I have these guys in a container, well, you'll naturally assume that those two charts are related. So use those containers to help group your story into elements. Um, I think an easy way um, to think about chart types as you start to think about them in terms of your layout is for those people that like to get into deep stuff, like to do the advanced chart types, the high color stuff, mapping, whatever, that generally is going to be the best chart to put there because it is highly visual. There's a lot of color and the eye will be naturally attracted to it. I would recommend that over here is where you put more of your lines and your big ass numbers, or maybe your very simple sort of other charts, maybe one or two color bar charts and these types of things here. Again, if this is the most important part of your story, support that with the chart types that are around it. Um, this is interesting, um, UX versus UI. Uh, these are, I don't know, maybe maybe we're, we're splitting, uh, we're, we're being a bit too specific here, um, but they are important. UX is um, the effectiveness in which people can interact, the experience. Um, you, you can see this down here, this is what I'll say. Products that delight users with their effectiveness. So think about it in terms of the ergonomic perspective. The user interface down here is projects that delight users aesthetically. Is it easy to use? Is it fun to use? Um, I've got some articles if you want to dig into those two at the end of this. So just as an example, um, I think I'm nearly out of time anyway. Just as I got two examples. Um, this is an example of a chart I found on Google. And again, you can see 
based off of what we just covered, this is somebody building individual worksheets and then pulling them together into a dashboard, which ends up with a very uncompelling, confused bar chart forest. There isn't a story here as much as there are find your own path, find your own meaning. One of these charts is probably valuable to you. Best of luck. Here's a second example. Simpler, but again, what's the story here? We have three different charts, but none of them really have the layout uh, emphasis or the storytelling in the way we position them. You would think that this is probably the most important one because it's got the most real estate. But this down here is high color. A lot of you probably started with that. There's a lot of wasted space here and here, which de-emphasizes this particular chart type. So again, let the charts support the story, not conform the story around the charts that you're excited about building. I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. The best dashboards start as doodles. You can be far more creative. Again, it's a different type of your brain, different part of your brain that you're using when you start to, to draw uh, and sketch. Uh, another thing that I like to do, and again, this is something that more advanced users can do to help support the community, is build good wireframes, use these as um, containers, color them, and then give them back to the community and say, all you have to do is bring in your charts into these containers and you've got a well laid out dashboard. Again, you still want to give them some training and guidance. There are some things that you could probably do in terms of uh, vetting them. Let's have a look. Okay, you've got a cross tab here and some high color stuff over here. Could we reverse it? What's the story you're trying to tell? But this gets people started thinking in terms of layout and chart types faster. So in terms of what's next, um, I've got a whole bunch of articles that I think are useful. I, I have to admit there is some self-promotion here. I did write two of those articles, but I spent a lot of time researching and I've got other references in those articles, but we talk about planning, layout and structure, chart types and that kind of stuff. There you go. That's me. Any questions?